Hey guys, thanks for tuning into this week's AMA. You had some really amazing questions. Um, first off, I kind of just want to remind the community that Ample is not a stable coin, and for us, success means one, having a distinct movement pattern, and two, having counter cyclical supply elasticity. It's a new type of digital asset, and, and that's what we're looking for here. Um, you've got Evan um, and Brandon. I see you. Cool. Um, so without further ado, uh, so first a quick disclaimer, none of this is investment advice. This is just our personal perspectives given what we see in the marketplace and what we um, think about the protocol. Right. Now All right, so question number one, and this is from Undefined ZA. After a series of consecutive negative rebases, it looks like market forces haven't behaved quite as expected in bringing market price to target price. Thoughts? Um, yeah, so I think actually uh, the market is doing exactly what we would expect it to do. So remember, um, going back to what Evan said earlier, um, we're not a stable coin. And when we say that, we don't say like, wink, wink, we're not a stable coin. We're actually not a stable coin in some fundamental ways. Yeah. Um, and so when people think about stable coins, they think, okay, the, the forces should directly push the price back to the target. But remember the equilibrium for the Ampleforce system is a little bit different. So equilibrium is the price near the target um, at the point where the supply needs to be. You know, according to whatever the market consensus is, right? And so right now the market supply is, um, I don't know the exact number right now, but high, high 40, 40 million. Close to 50 million Close still. Close to 50 million. Yeah. Which is about where we started with the IEO, right? And so I think an important um, concept around this particular system is what we internally call implied market cap. Yeah. So um, imagine right now we were to immediately go back to the price target of $1. That would imply a market cap of... 47 48 million right yeah now. you basically think about it in terms of the current outstanding circulating supply and you imagine if the price was one dollar what is the implied market cap and so right now yeah. if we were to return to the price target we'd still have a market cap of 50 million which yeah. is roughly what we began with at the time of the IO. Um, exactly yeah so the the price is the lever that changes the supply so mm -hmm. remember um, the goal of the protocol is to incorporate price information into supply only, only once supply gets where it needs to would you expect the price to go back to the equilibrium target price point. Right, and right now what the market is telling us is that there's still more supply than demand. So there are more circulating units of, or total units of amples than there currently is demand for, and as a result, the network should continue to contract. Yeah, um, yeah if there's any personal takeaway I have, um, it might be that we want the supply to move faster. Right? Yes. So, so I think what makes people um, so anxious right now is it takes so, so long for the supply to adjust. So we're seeing the supply move in slow motion, we very, are. very slowly. So we've been below the price target for a good 30 days now, and we've just barely gotten back to where we were you know, at launch point, right? So um, after the IEO, we saw the predictable exuberance that mm -hmm. you see around almost all IEOs. Um, and so now we're, we're having to sort of um, adjust to that extreme market force in the beginning. We're so going through a correction. Right. We were originally valued at $50 million, 50 million units each at $1. And mm -hmm. right now the market is trying to figure out what the anticipated next equilibrium state will right. be. And so if I think the market believes that, say, it should be $30 million, right, then it's going to wait until supply contracts at $30 million and, you know, price equals $1. There's just this yeah. implied exactly. market cap that you have to estimate. Exactly. So if, if you remember from our white paper, we spent a lot of time talking about um, market participants trying to predict what the next um, equilibrium market cap should be. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what's exactly what's going on right now. Yeah. Cool. cool. Okay, so next question. This is from uh, Crypto Guns 112 Wait, wait. Oh, wait, sorry. Okay, so the second question is actually from Undefined Z Z Again. Yeah. Again. Um, thanks for great questions. Um, is it possible market makers may be feeling FUD given that the market seems to be moving against them, i.e. the theoretical profit to be made in moving the market price to the target price is not materializing, and rather there is a recent history of loss in taking this position? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple parts to this question. I think, you know, for market makers, uh, they're largely looking for volume. I don't think they really care about much more um, their FUD or whatever. Market makers know how to profit in all sorts of situations. and. Uh, they're just looking for more volume right now. We're only on one exchange, um, Bitfinex. There's not a ton of altcoin volume there. Um, it's just across the board. It's, it's just kind of across the projects. board. Um, but in terms of the theoretical profit that you're talking about, 
Uh, you were saying that, right, active, so really the way I think about it is active traders need to be looking at the next ex expected equilibrium state, just as Brandon was talking about. I think that um, there really shouldn't be this belief that in our system, the way to succeed is by buying high and selling low. That's not really what's going on here. I think in a, a more liquid environment, that kind of mentality would get just washed yeah. out really quickly. So I think a key insight here is sort of going back to the previous question. Yeah. Um, we're seeing right now just how slow our protocol is, right? Um, so the supply adjusts very, very slowly. In fact, much slower than the price can move, right? And so um, if you have positions in the marketplace, um, I would expect that you're much more exposed to movements in price rather than movements in supply. Yeah. And so if you're a market maker and you're doing large volumes over the day, you don't care so much about the changes in supply. You care a lot more about the volume of activity going on and the prices that volume takes place at. Yeah, that's right. There's just going to be a lot more for the taking in terms of price movement than supply movement, which only happens once per day. Exactly. Cool. Um, next question. So this is from Crypto Guns 112 does the team have any plans to incentivize holders during a negative rebase? Looks like buyers are playing a cat and mouse game with the token. It seems they're waiting to get it way lower. Um, yeah, so first, um, uh, we're not really seeing a whole lot of sell pressure on the books, and yeah. so I don't think that's what's causing uh, most of the activity that we're seeing out in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, uh, really quick, no, we're not considering any alternatives for what to incentivize holders or anything like that. No. If we added rules like that, it would turn into a completely different protocol. It would it be actually, a different coin. Yeah. Uh, like um, the Ample token needs to maintain its scarcity profile. That's its sole purpose. Yeah. If it were to change, it would be a different coin. Um, it would actually be different than what we uh, marketed and sort of sold and advertised in the IEO. So right. I think it's way, way too early to do any, any drastic changes like that. No. It doesn't mean that people can't create um, applications on top of the protocol. I don't see any fundamental changes to the protocol itself. No. Um, yeah, so the activity right now, it's more about um, how much traders want to accumulate and at what market cap, right? Um, yep. And so um, if, you're, if you're a holder, if you're not a very frequent um, participant in the marketplace, uh, your percent holdings are safe. Like, you don't get diluted. That's one of the great properties of Amples. Mm -hmm. um, it's only once you start to play this active game um, that you kind of seek extra profit opportunities on top of that, right? Yeah. Um, and there's also some risk involved in doing that as well, right? So you could decide to start trading a whole lot in the marketplace. Um, and then uh, if you do that well, you could come out the other side with higher percentage ownership. Or if you do that uh, incorrectly, you could come out the other side with a lower percent ownership, right? Um, and so all these active traders are competing with each other um, to sort of accumulate uh, the highest percentage given their, ca their capital at their disposal right now. Yeah. Um, so I think it's... Um, it's all up to you, your risk profile, um, and how you want to participate. Um, I think that if you are a very active trader, I would say that you have to be on top of it because price could change very quickly, right? So if the market consensus starts to show that the overall network is nearing some sort of consensus around market cap, you might see the price go back to the target very, very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the case. I think we'll, we'll need to see whether that happens or not. Um, but if you do start trading a lot, you should be aware of the risks and potential benefits as well. Yeah, but I also do kind of think that the market is waiting for the price or supply to get lower to accumulate. Potentially. Yeah. Could be. We'll see. Right? It all, all depends on the signals we get from the market. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so this question is from Fightstar99. Okay. Uh, what is the progress status of getting Ample listed on other exchanges that will affect the Oracle pricing? So unfortunately, though we do understand that this is a top priority and it internally is the top priority for us, we're not really supposed to be talking about that. So our hands um, are just tied. Our hands are tied. Uh, we're not supposed to be yeah. talking about exchange conversations, but it's incredibly important. It's no different than any other project. Yeah. Um, There's just some things that we're not free to talk about publicly, unfortunately. Um, OK. Uh, do you want me to read this one? I'll see. Uh, just, why don't you answer this question? Is that good? Sure. Go okay. ahead. Um, so what is the ultimate vision for Ample Forth? Uh, the long-term goal for Ample is defined as an alternative to central bank money. This is from Payment, by the way. Uh, thanks for the great questions. Uh, what does that mean? Are we talking about a commodity like gold, or are we talking about an alternative to fiat money like USD? The reason I ask is that I have been critically thinking about the negative rebases and in what light they really make sense. 
Although I find the technical design of having a coefficient for expansion and contraction very elegant, I cannot explain to myself how in the future anyone's salary can be paid in amples during a period of negative rebases. We'd love to hear some thoughts on this. Great question. Um, I think that really when we talk about an alternative central bank money, we're, we're talking about base monies here. So real quick, amples were designed to address the problems with natural commodity monies like gold and silver. No kind of, you know, I don't know. There's, no, a, there's a distinction here between uh, central bank money and what a lot of people think of when they think of fiat. Yeah. Um, it's actually not um, a very simple distinction between one and the other. Yeah. Um, so central bank money are deposits at the central bank, mm -hmm. um, cash and coins and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, what you have in your bank account is not necessarily fiat or not necessarily central bank money, right? This is a demand deposit. Um, yeah, uh, and so well, I mean, the real simple answer, I think, is that it was designed to address the problems of gold, no mm -hmm. detours, right? So what we do know is like, you know, gold was wonderful, and so is Bitcoin in the sense that it's invulnerable to runaway inflation. It's very difficult to debase the value of gold, which is why people used it effectively as a base money. I think its biggest vice is the fact that it can't really respond to economic shocks and is thus vulnerable to runaway deflation. So thinking back to Bretton Woods at the end of that in 1971, um, Nixon had to cancel redeemability to prevent a deflationary spiral. Um, now, if we were to replace gold as this base money uh, upon which a U.S. dollar banking system was constructed, if we were to replace gold with Bitcoin in 1971 at the end of Bretton Woods, we would have simply been no better off than with gold because it's a fixed supply commodity, mm -hmm. right? Um, it too cannot respond to economic shocks and it too will be vulnerable to runaway deflation. And so a desirable quality for base money is, is, is the ability to respond to economic phenomenon like sudden shocks. Mm -hmm. That's ultimately why we switched from the Bretton Woods system into a pure fiat system because fiat had the ability um, to adjust its supply elastically. Um, so with Amples, we, we're, we're really thinking about what sort of commodity money would have been a good replacement for gold at the end of Bretton Woods in 1971. It would have to be a commodity much like ours, which has a rules-based approach to um, supply elasticity um, and, and is therefore invulnerable to runaway inflation and invulnerable to runaway deflation. Exactly. Yeah, so it's a great question, but I think if you're really curious, learn, learn you know, learn a little bit more about what the definition of base money is, because, you know, under Bretton Woods, it's not as though people were being paid salaries in gold, right? We had redeemability into gold, but people were largely being paid their salaries and wages in U.S. dollars, just just as products were largely denominated in U.S. dollars. So there's mm -hmm. this banking system that was constructed on top of a redeemable policy. Uh, through which dollars could be changed into gold. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, hoarding still, you know, had the potential to really take hold because people could speculate on gold, knowing that that redeemability was in place and that there was a li liquidity crunch. So, mm -hmm. great question. Yeah. Okay, another one uh, from Paymon. Um, so, some thoughts were floating around on making the negative rebase period more productive for those who hodl through the period and have the most skin in the game. Would love to hear more details on what alternatives are being considered, even if only at a conceptual level at this point. Um, yeah, so going back to that previous question, uh, we're not considering any alternatives or changes to the protocol right now. No. Um, I think we're still seeing, we're still seeing the first market cycle, right? Yeah, um, and, so and here's the good news. Largely, Amples are doing what they were designed to do. Nothing here mm -hmm. is truly unexpected. It's mm -hmm contracting it's um, correcting yeah so i think yeah no changes to change no plans to change the protocol yeah um uh, if there's anything I w we would consider changing at all if there's enough um feedback from the community or people wanting this we yeah. change the rebase reaction lag parameter but even then um uh, i'm a little hesitant to do that unless there's really uh, serious need to yeah right um, now we feel as though the supply policy is reacting very slowly in crypto speed but yeah. compared to a normal monetary policy it's still reacting very quickly yeah. and we want to see how this performs in a more liquid environment before we make any sort of aggressive changes mm -hmm. but the idea of like eliminating contraction in general is kind of out of the question the whole point of this protocol yeah. is to uphold one elastic supply policy and to never change mm -hmm. um, that's the beauty of being a purely 
monetary instrument with no other agenda whatsoever. It's kind of like Bitcoin. Like if we decided that we wanted to like change, you know, the supply cap of Bitcoin, we'd have to fork the coin because so much of the purpose of Bitcoin is to uphold that supply schedule that if you change that, it would have to be called something else. So the same is with mm-hmm. Amples. If we change the supply policy, it's yeah. not Amples anymore. So it makes Amples yeah. Amples is exactly the rules of the supply policy. Exactly. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So I actually remember a lot of conversations sort of like this in the early days of Bitcoin. People trying to figure out exactly what it was, where its value came from. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to take a while for people to get familiar and comfortable um, just with this protocol, just like anything that's new. Um, and I'm really excited to see that happen. Yeah, I mean, the, it, it's one of those things that people have to kind of experience and think through for themselves. Exactly. Feel the fear, feel the greed, understand how yeah. it affects you know the macro economy, and then either agree with it or disagree with it. Uh, that's right. Uh, okay, so this question is also from Payment uh, over Telegram. Uh, what are the impressions of the founders on Ample's movement pattern so far, and is the experiment so far unfolding according to their expectations or differently? Yeah. I mean, I really, really feel good about it. So the fact that the pattern, again, of fear and greed seems to revolve more around whether we're expanding or contracting than anything else is the strongest potential indicator that the movement pattern will decorrelate and decouple from that of digital assets today and traditional assets it's just a really really good sign like even the concern that we're getting right now about being in a contraction cycle the fact that that's dominating kind of the emotional pattern and and will thus potentially dominate the behavioral pattern is a really really good sign now i do think that we're still in a low volume environment so right now one of these guys did bring up the possibility that like hey it might benefit us in the near term to actually buy high and sell low uh, if we're in a more liquid environment, just imagine that's what everybody's doing, and then one guy comes in with a major stack who decides he's going to buy low and sell high. That person's going to clean up. So I think we'll also see some of these behaviors, ex- and, you know, adapt and morph towards more what we kind of outlined in the white paper, which mm-hmm. is more of like an equilibrium state type of movement pattern. But right now, I think the indicators are very strong that we will succeed in. Um, discovering a new movement pattern. One, remember that's success criteria number one, and two. Um, yes, we are executing um, supply expansion and contraction counter cyclically. So mm-hmm. that was success criteria number two. Um, exactly, and I think uh, we brought up about liquidity is also a very important ingredient yeah. right now. Um, uh, before we can really s- draw any hard conclusions, we need to see this performing in um, a bigger liquidity pool. Yeah, and mo- unfortunately, even according to our academic advisors, we need to be collecting at least a year of data you know, in a highly yeah. liquid environment to make any sort of conclusions one way or another. Yeah. So it's too... Um, we did sort of expect that the first um, swings will be rather big, large ones. Yeah. Right. So right now, we're looking for a foothold of what you know the first sort of sustainable market cap consensus is. Yep. Right? Um, it's going to take a while for the market to find that first one. Yeah. Um, and then even from there, we'll see some cycles up and down. And as the market gets... Um, learns more about how to uh, handle this asset. Yep. Um, you know, we personally think that those swings will um, dampen a bit. Dampen. Yeah. Uh, get smaller over time. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Okay. Uh, next question. Please share a detailed roadmap of what you're working on. For example, seeing integration with Compound, but is that already a semi-dead end pending a successful community vote sometime in the future, or is there anything else to it? Also, I've seen improvements to the dashboard, but it's not clear what kind of improvements we're talking about and why the dashboard needs any improvements. By detailed, I don't mean a timeline with deadlines. I just mean more details than a short Telegram message. Uh, Sure, happy to do that. In fact, we should uh, just put a roadmap page back on our website. We had one earlier, but it was out of date. Yeah. Um, And so once we get that um, back recent again, then we can publish that so it's more permanent. Um, yeah, so uh, real quick, so the technical stuff is really easy to talk about. Um, so we're working to further decentralize the Oracle. Um, so uh, Chainlink integration is ongoing. The technical requirements for that should be done this week. So that's going to happen really soon. We've been in conversation with there to make sure that they're doing all the right com- computations, um, submitting the data in the right format in the actual you know 24-hour volume weight average, which is what we need from the marketplace. Um, we're also going to add an Oracle page to the dashboard for visibility, so you'll be able to see um, the current status of all the Oracles. Um, we also have um, integration ongoing with Quantstamp, which mm-hmm. we'll focus more on after we get Chainlink up and running. Um, and then we have another one that we haven't even announced yet, but it's coming soon. Yeah. Um, uh, we're going to be adding some 
utilities pages, right? Some things that can do simple conversions between ample through time, that sort of thing. Um, people have been asking for that. Um, it's just good quality of life improvements. Um, we really want to add a correlations page to show you market dynamics and to give you an idea of the actual relationship between Ampoles and other assets in the ecosystem, um, hopefully in a real-time way. Um, of course, other ecosystems integrations um, we're, we're looking hard at, nothing really to announce quite yet. Um, there are some long-term technical projects um, like uh, integrating with other chains or adding decentralized governance. We're not spending any cycles on that right now because I don't think it's important to the project right now. Um, those are important, but maybe a couple years from now. Yeah, I mean, right now, I mean, to be fair, the most important thing is getting access to more volume and more retail demand. Yep. Um, so that's why we have kind of an initiative to expand a little bit in China. So Richie's mm -hmm. been there for the past, past month or so already. We just made our first full-time hire out there in addition. Yep. I'm, I'm about to hop on a plane to Shanghai as of Thursday. Um, it's really important that we build community specifically in China and in Beijing and Shanghai and second tier cities because so much of the retail market is out there mm -hmm. um, and so many of the important exchanges are out there. And so um, what we all want is to collect the data necessary um, for this project and to mm -hmm. advance its agenda. And so, I mean, our prioritization yeah. kind of comes from there. And also related to the increasing awareness, we have some more materials on the way that I think is going to be really cool. Mm -hmm. um, in different mediums, so we've got some really great video content that I'm personally really, really excited to see get out there. Yeah. Um, hopefully in the next month sometime, but I guess uh, it should be pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, one of the medium goals of Ample is to be used as collateral. Does it make sense to use it as collateral during negative rebases? If yes, how so? If no, is there any other use case during that period? The only use case I could think of is that people would want to borrow Ample in order to short it. That would, but that would even accentuate the price swings and increase the problem identified in the previous question. Yeah. This is from Payman. Okay, yeah. I'm mean, Just another quick reminder that you know the goal behind Ample is to have, we, we wanted to have a, a, a distinct movement pattern. The reason we wanted to have a distinct movement pattern is because then it could be useful for diversification. It can serve as a hedge against your crypto holdings or traditional asset holdings. Uh, and the reason why you might want to hold Ample as a collateral asset is for the same reason that any portfolio manager might want to hold an orthogonal or uncorrelated asset in their portfolio. Because mm -hmm. when you include assets that are uncorrelated or different from other assets in your portfolio, you reduce the covariance of your entire portfolio and you ultimately reduce volatility of the aggregate the broad picture right so while any given asset might be highly volatile the portfolio itself can stabilize if you include uncorrelated assets and these are particularly important during periods of macroeconomic instability which is why we see the potential golden era for bitcoin coming up we see a lot of people interested in potentially buying into bitcoin because it's an uncorrelated risk asset and it's useful for portfolio construction. So um, Amples would be an, a natural kind of complement to Bitcoin because its purpose is to kind of have a distinct movement pattern. And you would put it in a, a basket of collateral assets for the same reason you would put Bitcoin into a portfolio because it diversifies. Um, yeah, if you have um, any kind of multi-collateral system, yeah. um, you want your different types to be as different from each other as possible. Otherwise, you might as well just have one. Right, right. Um, and, and, you know, obviously, if, if the goal is to have a decentralized um, set of collateral assets, mm -hmm. then the importance of being as different as possible is even greater. If you can simply just put a bunch of dollars in as collateral, then you can have the most stable type of collateral asset imaginable. But yeah. if you're looking at a decentralized ecosystem, you don't have access to dollars, you need decentralized assets, then it's mm -hmm. best to have ones that don't move the same way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking of collateral, I, I realized that the previous question asked about the status of the compound. Um, yeah, so we spent some time uh, analyzing how Ampoles and Compound work together. Um, we actually looked at the C token implementation um, to make sure that we didn't need to make any changes in some modeling to see how it would react. Um, we're not planning to do any more technical work until uh, we see the results of the community votes. Yeah. Yep. Um, when positive rebase again, negative rebase makes me sad. Again, the fact that negative rebase makes you sad and positive rebase makes you happy is the strongest indication that we'll have a distinct movement pattern. Because yeah. no one else has negative rebase and positive rebase to contribute to sadness or happiness. I mean, it makes me sad too. It makes me sad too. It does make, it's supposed to make you yeah. sad. Um, but hey, uh, I mean, every asset goes up and yeah, goes down. Things uh, go down and things go up and, you know. 
Yeah, I remember seeing a really great video on Bitcoin a long time ago where it looked at every <laughs> excessive bubble. Yeah. And the moral, moral of the story was don't invest in Bitcoin because it's going to crash. Yeah. yeah. And it's crashed many times. Yeah. Um, uh, it remains to be seen what kind of behavior we'll see with handles. Yeah. I mean, Bitcoin has can, had countless near death experiences, but, you know, really those like it crashed and then it crashed and then it crashed and it just did so in a way that painted a general upward trajectory that's desirable nonetheless. Yeah. Okay. Um, man. A lot yeah. of questions. Yeah. Yeah, fight star ninety nine is getting ample on more exchanges that affect the oracle pricing. Ultimately, dependent on the progress of the chainlink partnership to achieve a reliable input of the price across the various exchanges. Uh, great question. Uh, simple answer is no. Um, integration with chainlink and integration with exchanges are two completely different uh, issues. Um, uh, integration with chainlink is coming along really well and should be done very quickly. Um, I think the sources they get their data from is um, more of the aggregators rather than from the exchanges themselves. So Brave New Coin, Kaiko, uh, sites like that. Cool. Um, yep. Yeah. All right. Oh, when we already answered that it was when will oh, Chainlink yeah. link tech integration go live? Very soon. Right. Okay. Question from Payman. Uh, in what light may the SEC view Ampleforth? Could you share any insights? Could there be any hurdles in listing Ampleforth on U.S. exchanges? Um, I mean, it's really difficult to comment on the mindset of regulators who are completely outside our, our control, but we do have a legal non-security opinion from Fenwick. Um, we feel strongly about that. Um, that's all we can really say about it. And we, we ourselves are not regulators, but we do work with professionals who understand the mindsets of regulators, and we do have our opinion. We're not lawyers, but we work with lawyers. Those yeah. Are. We work with the best lawyers, I think. Okay, one of the truly fascinating aspects of Ample is its supposed ability to move price to target and hence have a stable-ish behavior as coined by one of the community members. It is still too early to tell, but from what I've seen so far, the tendency of most people will be to sell Ample when it is below 95 cents and buy when it is above. The rebases seem to amplify the sentiments of FOMO and FUD. As such, I expect to see huge price swings. Is this expected? Doesn't this go against the long-term goals of the project? From Telegram. Um, yeah, so great question. Also along the same lines of questions we've answered before, so I know there's a whole bunch, whole bunch of new stuff that we can say here. Yeah. Uh, but if you read the white paper, you'll notice that we spend a lot of time and energy talking about price movements. Um, the price movement is actually one of the things that makes Ample's interesting. Yeah. Um, and so it, uh, we don't call ourselves a stable or stable-ish coin even. No. Um, if we could ever call ourselves a stable-ish coin, it would be way far down the line. Um, yeah. But definitely right now, not right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, another just to repeat, um, the supply movements are very slow, and we're seeing how slow it actually takes for the supply to adjust. Um, price movements are relatively much faster, and so you need to think about both. Um, but really, the the price um, is the lever that adjusts the supply, and we're waiting for the supply to get where it needs to go. Yeah, I mean, in terms of reduce or returning supply or a price to the target, look. When it's under the price target, it's going to contract until the market tells it to stop contracting. When it's over the price target, it's going to expand until the market tells it to stop expanding. Um, that will simply happen. There's no way that could actually fail. It just it just will be that way. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing is amplifying the sentiments of FOMO and fun. This is interesting. This comes back to what we were saying before. But like what what I think um, the question asker is saying is like it appears to be the case that people should want to sell under the price target and buy over the price target. And so, I mean, I just I just kind of challenge you to imagine in a slightly different liquidity situation, if, if, if your strategy is to buy high and sell low, what happens when somebody with a large stack decides that their strategy is to buy low and sell high? It will quickly pressure the, the market to make an adjustment. So I really do think that the limited data we have on the pattern as we're seeing it today is not going to reflect how it will play out at equilibrium. Yeah, well, it's possible to buy high and sell low and sell high profit on Ample. Game. It's a very thin <laughs> don't, don't. possibility. Yeah, just like buy high and sell yeah, low. That seems I don't think so. Yeah, I think in the long run yeah. you're gonna want to buy low and sell high. Yeah. Uh, although this is not investment advice. Again, um, not, exactly. Yeah, we're not this giving just, this. This is just our perspective. Two guys. Yep. Volunteering their perspective. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, another question from Payment. Thanks for all the great, great questions. Um, Ample is only live for a few months, and congratulations on all that has been achieved so far. Any major lessons learned? Yeah, I mean, no matter how accurately or how 
specifically we describe what we think is going to happen people kind of have to experience this coin themselves because it really is different like we're still kind of on some level fighting this fight about whether it's a stable coin or not even though we've overtly said that it's not it's not a stable coin because it's meant to be volatile uh, but what that pressures people to ask is in like if it's meant to be volatile then why why should it be volatile why why do you want it to be volatile in a different way and there are all these kind of follow-up questions that are really, really important, and I mean, the, the, the way to understand, I think, is for people to kind of take a small position in the coin or observe it and understand it um, over time and it just experience it. I mean, who was the guy that said, um, this ain't your mama's cryptocurrency? Oh, uh, Chris Black. Chris, Chris Black, Black said something hilarious. Um, <laughs> he might actually prove that uh, tagline. Yeah, That's I mean, okay. he, he said something like, nobody should buy Ample without studying it for at least two to four weeks because it ain't your mama's um, cryptocurrency. maybe not bad advice. It's not bad advice. Yeah. This is kind of a thinker. You do need to understand. I mean, it doesn't really get simple until you ask yourself, what was the problem with gold anyways, right? Not what the problem with fiat so that's a really complex answer. But if you ask yourself what was the problem with gold that led us to fiat, you get a really simple solution. and It looks a lot like ample. Yeah. But until then, most people haven't really asked that question. Yeah. Um, wow. So, yeah, that's the last question. You made it. Um, yeah, so um, thanks for all the great questions. Yeah. Um, happy to do this. We're going to try and do it regularly. Yeah. Um, sorry for the delay. We had some uh, hiccups with the uh, equipment. Um, we got those under control. Um, if you guys have any suggestions on better ways we could do this, we'd love to hear it. Um, mm -hmm. We've tried out Reddit right now for a way to just capture questions, capture questions and have people vote on them. Um, we could also do that through Telegram. It seems like a lot of our community is overseas where Reddit isn't as popular. Yeah. Um, so let us know what you think is the best. Um, we'll we'll uh, go along with it. Yeah, and if there's anything we could ask of you, it's just um, you know help share what you've learned, right? Because this is really different, and, and we can't be everywhere. So if you're in a different community and you hear people talking about Amples as though it's a stable coin, just let them know that's not really our our goal, um, and that there you know are other yeah. other things that we seek to accomplish here that we think are much bigger. Yeah. It's still early days of the project. Yeah, um, there's still a lot ahead of us, and um, I'm excited to see uh, where that goes. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks a lot.